the Uvalde shooting was one of the worst and most terrifying shootings we've had. Kids were vulnerable in their classrooms. We're now one year removed from the tragic Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde, Texas, where 19 students and two teachers were shot and killed. Cover them, cover them. Watch. Go, go, run, run over there. Come on, get them out, get them out. Come on, come on, guys. Just drop it. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Yeah, go, 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 go. Pull her, pull her, pull her, pull her. In the days and months following the shooting, first responders were widely criticized for a lengthy response to the shooting, waiting more than 70 minutes to confront the gunman. How about this? How about this, guys? Break this window and get these kids out. It, it, it's secure to the glass. They won't break through there. We won't get them out. We won't. We, won't. we need to get through. We need to get. We need a breaching tool. Body camera video shows first responders in the hallway for more than an hour waiting to act, all while knowing students and teachers were inside the classrooms with the gunman still in the school. There's victims in the room with us. A child on the phone, multiple victims. A child just called if they have victims in there. We call 911. Now, one year removed from the shooting, many are still coming to terms with the tragedy. Dr. Jonathan Metzel, a professor of sociology and psychiatry at Vanderbilt University, tells Long Crime Network the first anniversary is significant. Well, I study mass shootings and anniversaries are horrible because uh, so certainly for the town and for the city and for the families um, and, and for the state and really for the country, anniversaries like this are horrific reminders of loss um, and and people relive the trauma very often. And so I, um, and also people, I, I think some families feel like it's a year later and people are forgetting already. And so there's a kind of frustration there. And so absolutely anniversaries are huge, huge markers. Um, for many people because that's where their life changed as they knew it. On May 24th, 2022, an 18-year-old gunman shot and wounded his grandmother before heading to Robb Elementary School. The gunman, a former student of the school, entered through an unlocked door and barricaded himself into two adjoining classrooms where he opened fire on the victims. The suspect was inside for more than an hour as local and state first responders waited on the scene. He was eventually shot and killed by members of the United States Border Patrol Tactical Unit. Hey, watch it, bro. He's in that back room. He's popping shots off. He shot the windows out. He's in the back room on the, on the far inside. One year out, the police response and mass shooting prevention are still hot button topics surrounded by contention. And for a second there, it looked like people might all come together and find some kind of common ground on gun reform. Um, unfortunately, tragedies like this, as we've seen, lead to even more polarization. Metzl says the passionate response to the shooting hasn't led to a dramatic change. You know, there's been obviously a lot of reckoning about that did the should the police go into the room or not? What would have happened? It's not super clear if they would have gone in with guns blazing to me what would what would have been the outcome um but 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 i and you can hear me hesitating in frustration in my voice because i wish we would have said this is where we hit rock bottom and we turned it around and i think unfortunately a tragedy like this led to people being more dug in on on, on all sides and so it's another one of these horrible shootings where people who shouldn't have to worry about anything except going to school um lost their lives uh, and, and and I I think we're still wrestling with what to do as a country honestly. Instead, the Uvalde response has been seen by some as a roadmap for what not to do. Let's just put it out there. Uvalde was a fail. It was a fail on law enforcement and I'll just put it and that hurts me to have to say as a former law enforcement officer, but it was. Um, and we learned a lot from that and we're continuing to learn. There are people who are in positions of authority who I had, in my opinion, have no business being in a position of authority. And um, again, in Uvalde, it took that maverick leader, uh, a, a border patrol agent, who was, my understanding was basically a, a SWAT, their version of their SWAT team, to make a decision and go. And so, that's a culture issue within law enforcement. Retired police sergeant and private investigator Ashton Pack 
compares the Uvalde response to that of the Covenant School shooting in Nashville, where three students and three staff members were shot and killed. PAC tells Long Crime Network it was likely an issue of policing culture that led to the lengthy response time in Uvalde. I, I bet the difference in the police departments is, is a culture issue. Uvalde had a culture of, I don't want any, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm going to wait for the boss to make a decision as where maybe Nashville has fostered an, an, a spirit of, yeah, we have rules and regulations, but when lives are on the line, we want you to step up and make, make decisions and, and, and handle business to save our citizens' lives, who we serve. But Metzl says the two mass shootings shouldn't necessarily be compared. We had a mass shooting in Nashville a couple of months ago, and that was an open, the police rushed in and encountered the shooter, but the shooter was like in an open space near a window. There were multiple uh, entry and exit points. There were no hostages at that moment. And so again, I, I, I think certainly Uvalde should have been done differently. But but again, this the the, the criteria for every every situation are so different that it's not like you can say, oh, we should have done exactly that one thing. And and, and that's kind of what makes it hard. By contrast, Robb Elementary School had different security features and a shooter who was barricaded inside a classroom. Na the Nashville school is a private school with an armed guard and um, many locked entryways. The shooter had to shoot in through uh, a, a locked door. Uh, the shooter was standing by a window in an open space. And so it's it, it just really wasn't exactly the same scenario. I mean, both happened in schools, obviously, both, uh, but, but the shooter was kind of roaming the halls, uh, shooting random people in the Nashville shooting, not locked, barricaded into a classroom. And also just the security was much tighter in Nashville. And even then, kids still lost their lives. Let's go! Police! Metzl says so much about the Uvalde shooting differs from the Nashville shooting. The shooter walked in through kind of non-existent security and started shooting and ultimately barricaded himself in a room with a bunch of kids and teachers. And we have an awful lot of footage of the police wanting to go in, but then the, the sound of the gunshots was so loud and so terrifying they would push forward, fall back, push forward, fall back. And so there was an agonizing amount of time where the police just waited outside as this murder and shooting was starting to happen. Now, I think it, from their perspective, obviously they made a mistake, um, but from their perspective, they were probably first acting scared because it's who, you know, it was a terrifying scene or the idea that they could have negotiated with this person and saved some lives, an idea that there was a negotiation happening. Metzl says the polarizing topic of mass shootings was magnified after the Uvalde shooting, but it's still unclear what outcome a different police response could have created. You know, there's been obviously a lot of reckoning about that did the, should the police go into the room or not? What would have happened? It's not super clear if they would have gone in with guns blazing to me. He calls it an impossible situation. Should they have run in, smashed down the door, started shooting right away? And I don't think that that answer is as simple as it could have been in that situation. I think people tend to oversimplify that because it was an enclosed space. And so I, I honestly don't know what would have happened if they would have smashed in that one door with no escape and started shooting. So it was really a horrible, impossible situation with many police mistakes, I think. But also the easy answer is to not have a gun in the school in the first place. It wasn't like if the police had run in right away, it would have, it would have changed the outcome. Right now, Metzl says there are still flaws in the system. The issue is, what, what do we learn exactly? Do we learn how to better barricade schools or do we learn how to try to prevent this upstream uh, better? And I think the important similarity with Nashville and, and Evaldi is both times somebody who shouldn't have had a gun got a gun and got a gun legally. And so that that really is, to me, the bigger question, which is the upstream question. How did this person get a gun in the first place? Not do we turn our schools into fortresses and have police in front of every classroom. 
While mass shootings seem very prevalent, Metzl says they account for only a small number of annual shootings in the United States. We have about 50,000 gun deaths a year in this country. Um, the majority are not mass shootings. Um, two thirds of gun death is gun suicide, which is largely predictable and it's a gun access problem. Um, so we could cut gun suicides in half or more um, with really basic policies that keep guns away from people who are having life crises. Um, so gun suicide, which is 30,000, 28,000 gun deaths a year is very predictable. Accidental shootings, we could prevent shootings there by mandating safe storage laws. Um, partner shootings, if somebody has a history of partner violence, they're more likely to shoot their partner. Um, and so people who have attacked their partner in the past shouldn't have access to guns. Um, alcohol, create, uh, if there's alcohol involved, they're more likely to be a shooting. He believes gun accessibility is a large part of the problem. First, it's too easy for people to get guns. And so the fact that for many of these mass shootings, people have had histories of troubling behavior and their family has very little recourse. Um, in the Nashville shooting and the Uvalde shooting, these people were like flashing red flags. They should not have had AR-15s. They should not have had semi-automatic weapons. I mean, I would bet we could cut gun death in half in this country in just a couple of years if we had these kind of national policies, but we don't do that. And so we focus on mass shootings because they're public, they're terrifying, they're spectacular in, in many ways. Um, but it's just important to know that it's not like we can't stop gun crime. I certainly think we should do more to try to profile mass shooters. I'm not trying to deny that. But I also think if just the overall toll of gun violence is something we could easily address and we choose not to. As for Uvalde shooting survivors or families of the victims, this time of year may be extra emotional. I just think anniversaries are very important times and, and it's important to come together as communities and ask hard questions and also to support families and communities who have who have been through this, which is now so many, so many families and communities. Metzl says there are many ways family members react to an anniversary, but no wrong way to cope. I, I don't think there's any one way. This is kind of, it's, it's like any loss. It's like any, any death. And so um, some families that I've interviewed become more politically active. They become active in gun safety reform. Um, some um, never want to be contacted again, honestly. I mean, I, I, I'm writing a book now about a mass shooting and half the parents um, became very politically active and very public. And the other half wanted nothing to do with it. They didn't, they just feel like their family was destroyed on that moment and they, you know, I, they're never heard from again. And so I think there's a, a, a quite a big range. Uh, and I think we have to respect that, right? There's no one right way to, to respond to something like this. One year after the Uvalde school shooting, an official release of the unedited evidence has not been made public. The Uvalde County District Attorney says a criminal investigation could take years. Meanwhile, a separate United States Department of Justice investigation is still underway. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.